Professor Ubier's house. Looks pretty creepy. I'd been away from Paris and hadn't seen Nico for nearly six months. I wanted to celebrate our reunion, but she had other plans. An appointment with an archaeologist. Something to do with a Mayan stone she came across while researching a story. The guy who answered the door didn't look much like an archaeologist to me. I had a bad feeling about this. I glanced over the books, vaguely hoping to find a copy of How to Deal with Poisonous Spiders While Tied to a Chair. No such luck. But I noticed one corner of the bookcase was supported by a loose block of wood. Maybe I'd been a little heavy-handed, but it was a question of survival. Of course, I was still tied to a chair in a burning house with no means of escape. One mighty bound, our hero was free. Now, I had to deal with that fire. Inside, I found a bottle of tequila. Normally, I didn't drink strong spirits, but today was far from normal. Ew, disgusting. Not only did the tequila burn like hell, I just managed to stop myself from swallowing the worm. There was something short, fleshy, and gross on the carpet. It was the worm from the bottle of tequila. In the drawer was a small decorated pot. The pot contained a key. That dart was sharper than a mosquito's business end, but this didn't deter me from getting it anyway. It was a stylish little canvas number containing a lipstick, a handwritten note, and a pair of nylon panties with a large love heart emblazoned across the front. It occurred to me that Nico's tastes must have really changed while I was away. Well, they could be useful. I guess I had no business reading the note, but I figured it might give me a clue to what Nico was involved in. It was from Andre Labano, the history student Nico had known at college. The letter was sentimental mush and revealed that the exotic lingerie, as he called it, was a gift from him. It gave 
his telephone number. Labano figured himself as a rival for Nico's affections, but I couldn't believe that that creep was in the running. As I released the lock, something blew the doors open. The panties I'd found in Nico's bag were just what I needed to wrap around the hot cylinder. The cylinder gave out a faint hiss as the valve opened. What? Now I had one primed up and ready to use extinguisher. With a well-aimed squirt of his soda fountain, our unshakable hero saved the day. Now it was time to start looking for Nico. I wasn't going to burn myself on that red-hot doorknob, and it wasn't the time for subtlety. I'd found a piece of newspaper folded in two. It referred to a forthcoming eclipse of the sun. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be visible from Europe. The best place to view the eclipse would be Mexico. It was the newspaper clipping referring to the imminent eclipse. Wrapped inside it was another small piece of paper. It was a bank statement for UBA's account from an automatic telling machine. The last five withdrawals were for large amounts and all made in Marseille. It was Ubier's bank statement. Much as I disliked him, Labano might be my only hope of finding Nico. Hi, Andre. Who is this? It's George Stobart, Nico's boyfriend. Don't you mean ex-boyfriend? Look. I didn't call you just to pick a fight. I need to talk to you about Nico. Can't you accept she's just not interested in you? Listen, Andre, we need to talk. Nico's life depends on it. Okay. You remember the cafe at Montfaucon? Sure. Andre? You'd better show, you creep. I felt an irrational urge to wipe my ear. I unlocked the door. I wasn't looking forward to meeting Labano again, but he was my only link with Nico. There was no sign of Labano when I got to the cafe. I decided to order a coffee and wait for him. Pardon me, but don't I know you? Huh? You were here the, the day I found the catacombs. I was. Ah, yes. I remember you. Yeah. Are you still in the police force? No, not anymore. I'm a man of leisure. And what brings you back to Paris? My girlfriend. Ah. What it is to be young and in love. Will you share a bottle of wine with me? Hey, listen. I'd love to, but I need to keep a clear head. So my company isn't good enough for you. Why did you leave the police? I was forced to retire. The golden handshake. Only in my case, it was more copper than gold. How come? 
I was made a scapegoat to cover up the department's inefficiencies. Have you ever heard of a Professor Oubier? No, monsieur. I don't recall the name. Well, apparently he's an expert on Mayan art and history. A little out of my field of experience, monsieur. If he'd been a serial killer or a sodomite, I might have been able to help. What do you make of this dart? I remember a case where the victim was killed with just such a device. The poison acted in seconds, causing his body to swell up like an inflatable life raft. What do you make of this news cutting? Orange supplied fast food chain? No, it's the article above that. Oh! Total eclipse of the sun. Well, that's very dull in comparison. I don't know anything about eclipses. Tell me what you make of this note. From my years of experience, I gained a pretty good insight into handwriting. I'd say that note was written by a compulsive, obsessive type with an Oedipus complex. Hey, you've got just about everything apart from the ponytail. It was too hot to sit inside the cafe. Besides, I might miss Labino. Garçon? He ignored me. I'm sure it was deliberate. I had nothing else I wanted to ask the gendarme. Hey, you! Well, I'd like a cup of coffee, if you don't mind. When I finish serving this gentleman. Un café. Thanks. Do you know a guy called André Lobino? Oui. I know him. What of it? Well, I'm supposed to meet him here. Did I miss him? No. I have not seen him today. Have you heard of Professor Oubier? Oui. He married that actress, the little Dachshund. They used to come here. The nutty professor and the movie star. If Oubier's wife was a movie star, how come I never heard of her? She was big in France. The world doesn't stop at Hollywood. Her stage name was Carol Climax. She died in suspicious circumstances. How did Oubier's wife die? I heard he shot her. And got away with it? He had a good lawyer and a watertight alibi. Why would an eminent public figure like Oubier risk everything for murder? He wouldn't be the first, would he? Besides, people like him always get off. Do you know that man over there? I should think so. He's a regular customer. Look at this. A poison dart. Ah, we. Oui. Sure. It's the real thing. Knock my girlfriend out cold in a matter of seconds. Romantic. Sounds like a real close relationship you have going. That's all. Thank you. Well, well, this is a surprise, Georgie. I wouldn't normally call you, but Nico's in trouble, Andre. Deep trouble. You have to help me find her. What? What have you dragged her into this time? It was you that recommended Professor Oubier as an expert on Mayan art. Now his butler has kidnapped her, and he tried to kill me. Every time she gets involved with you, there is trouble. Walking out on her was the best thing you could do. My father was dying, damn it. I had no choice. Well, she soon recovered once she went back to her old friends. Drop it, Andre. Right now, Nico's in danger, and we have to work together. 
So, how can I help? Nico needed to speak to Ubie about a stone. Oh, you mean this stone? So that's what all the trouble's about. Precisely. Nico told me to guard it with my life. Well, it's worth more than that, surely. Oh, very funny. What's funny is that your life really is on the line. What are you talking about? The stone is a Mayan artifact, dummy. And the guy who kidnapped Nico was from Central America. It was the stone they were after. Oh my god, you mean I could be in danger too? What do you suppose the carving on the stone means? I don't know. I haven't shown it to anyone. Why don't you just give it to me? I don't want your death on my conscience, Georges. Where did Nico get the stone? I'm not sure I should tell you. Oh, you should. It was something to do with smuggling. Why didn't Nico take the stone to Ubier? I don't know. Perhaps she suspected something like this would happen. If she's been hurt, Andre, I'll break every bone in your body. No, that's typical of you. Do you think I don't care what happens to Nicole? It occurred to me that slugs don't have bones to break, but I kept that thought to myself. Tell me about your friend Ubie. He's more of a professional acquaintance than a friend. I see. So you don't really know him at all? No, I don't. Does Ubie employ a guy from Central America? Maybe. I don't know. What do you think this is, Andre? I don't know. I'll give you a clue. It's got more backbone than you. You think you're amusing, don't you? What can you tell me about this pot? Mm, South or Central American, I'd say. I have a friend who'd be able to tell you more. Where can I find this guy? He owns a gallery on the left bank. The Glees Gallery. Take a look at this, Andre. It's a bank statement. Yeah. Professor Ubier's account. Five large cash withdrawals in the space of three days. All from an automatic teller in Marseille. Suspicious, isn't it? You're even more crazy than you were before. See you later. Goodbye, Georgie. I've had enough of your games, Kala. Tell me what you've done with my stone. I thought your business was simply smuggling cocaine, Karzak. Why are you so interested in that stone? Either you tell me what I want to know, or Pablo here will make you talk. Okay. Well, I figured someone at the university would be able to help. So I had a word with one of my girlfriends, and she told me her boyfriend was a lecturer. I... I sent the stone to the Department of Ethnology. You know, I figured it was South American, so... You're not buying this, are you? That's enough! I don't have time to listen to your mindless prattle. We'll leave you to think it over. Come the morning, you'll be ready to talk. Do you miss being a gendarme? <sighs> yes, of course I do. When I wore that uniform, I commanded the respect. Not anymore. I grabbed the flask and was struck by a powerful smell of absinthe, a highly potent and illegal alcoholic drink. Now I had another lead. I could either go back to Ubier's house or visit the Glees Gallery. The Glees Gallery had style and class, but very few customers. Excuse me, sir. Uh-huh. That area is private. Oh, 
uh, so I'm not allowed back here? No, sir. Are you Mr. Glees, the owner? Good God, no. Uh, then I guess that must be him over there, right? Your powers of deductive reasoning astound me. Have you heard of Professor Oubier? Yes, of course. I was at his house earlier. If you're going to drop names, you could at least name one worth dropping. I thought Oubier was a well-respected man. Why, his last book was nothing but pseudo-intellectual claptrap. The demented ramblings of a drug-dependent has-been. What's that you're drinking? I'm not sure, but I have a suspicion it might be urine. Glees can't expect a favorable criticism of his gallery when he serves this muck. Would you give me your opinion on this pot, sir? Hmm, yes. Very rapouche. Rapouche? Hideous. What the hell do you think you're doing? You smashed my pot! Certainly, it was not only worthless, it was ugly and offensive. To you, maybe. Believe me, I was doing you a favor. I wasn't going to waste any more breath talking to that pompous blimp. Maybe I could turn the situation to my advantage, and at the same time, get my revenge. I didn't think he'd be interested. I splashed a little absinthe into the glass and hoped he wouldn't notice the change of color. Did you put something in my drink? Uh, yeah, I did. Well, what do you think? Well, it's certainly an improvement over Gleese's wine. In fact, I could grow to like it. Allow me. There was nothing in the case but styrofoam packing, but pasted on the side was the remains of a label. Underneath the logo of a flying bird were the words Condor Transglobal Mars. The rest of the label was missing. Were those pots very valuable? The pots are insured, but not the shelving. You've no idea how much that cost me. I hope to God UBA has plenty more of these pots at the docks. If not, I'm ruined. It was beginning to make sense. UBA had organized Nico's abduction. UBA withdrew money from Marseille. UBA was connected with Transglobal, who shipped their goods from a warehouse in Marseille. That's how the torn Transglobal label had once read. Marseille, not Mars. It wasn't much of a lead, but it was all I had. I set off immediately to catch the evening train. 